It's Futures Month here at Traders Post. And in this video, I'm gonna show you the new symbols that we've added for all of our future support. At this point, we have now added everything that TradeStation supports, everything from indexes to euros, currencies, interest rates, metals, energies, agriculture, softs, meats, everything. There's about 109 tickers in this list, and you can actually find our entire watch list for TradingView on this documentation page as well. So it's a perfect time for us to also release a future strategy. This particular strategy that we've put together here is a systematic approach to a day trading strategy that a friend of ours has developed that only trades the NQ futures. I've put together the strategy to work on both the NQ e-mini futures as well as the micro e-minis. We'll view the entire strategy on the micro e-minis so that it's more realistic to a smaller account size of $5,000. And I'll show you the results from that test. But first, why don't I show you how the strategy works from a discretionary standpoint, and then we'll move into the automated system. We need three exponential moving averages, and the settings for them on the five minute chart are eight as our sensitive EMA, 55 for our signal. And then to get general market direction, we're going to grab the 15 minute 55 EMA and turn gaps off. This strategy was developed with Elliott Wave in mind, but it uses the Fibonacci tools to discover our entry point as well as our target prices. So if we're looking at this moment here in time, where we see that there's an EMA crossover of the eight over the 55 and prices retrace and retest the 55, this is exactly the entry point that we're looking for. With a standard Elliott wave setup, this would be waves one and two, followed by three and four and five later in the chart. But this is the zone we care about most. Our entry is gonna be based on a Fibonacci retracement occurring at roughly the 0 0.5 to the 0 0.618 line. And this is where we want to get long. Our target zone is based on an extension hitting the 1.2. Somewhere around this range right here. And as we can see, this trade finishes right in the zone we're hoping for. One thing to confirm on your charts is that you have it set to logarithmic. It can also be set down here by hitting log. And that the tools you use for Fibonacci are set up on the log scale as well. So let's look at how this particular trade would play out. The first thing we want to do is set our entry zone where we use the fib retracement to set an entry but we don't want to take the entry on the retracement or the retest of the 55 we want to take it as long as it closes above the 8 ema and the first bar to close within five bars of retesting this 55 is the entry point so we want to take this bar right here a little bit higher than our 0 0.5 or 0 0.618 level but that's okay we're interested in confirmation and so we want to enter at this point. So let's look at how this would work from a systematic perspective. The simplicity of this strategy is based on something much simpler. The first thing is that we want to make sure that we're only trading a half hour after the open and right before close, as far as our opens are concerned. We want to make sure that the 8 EMA is above the 55 EMA, which is all above the 15 minute 55 EMA, and that we've recently retested the 55 EMA within five bars of closing above the eight EMA. And if all of that is correct, then this is our entry point here. Let me turn the strategy on and I'll show you what this actually looks like. I'm gonna set this up to use 5,000 of initial capital. We'll order one contract every time. We won't pyramid. We'll set our commissions at 50 cents per, which is the standard commission for micro E minis. We'll set a slippage model in place. At this point, I'm just setting it to five ticks. And to avoid any kind of repainting issues, we're going to make sure that we only calculate on bar close. Looking at the performance summary on the next forward contract, which expires in March of 2023, this particular strategy was profitable about 50% of the time and it has a profit factor of 3.265. The max drawdown on this one is also only 8%, and it took about 81 trades so far this quarter. The trading range on this is actually September 8th through today. And as we know, the CPI print was today. So I'll, I'll show you what that trade looks like. I tend to ignore what the net profit looks like because it's really easy to manipulate this number. 
if I wanted the net profit to look even better, I could just reduce my overall initial capital size and it's going to look like I doubled my performance. So remember that the net profit or absolute returns is really just relative to whatever your starting capital was. And it's really easy to make that number look huge when in reality, what we mostly care about is whether there's a signal in this trade and then it stands up consistently over time. What we're looking for is positive expectancy. Are we profitable? A decent number of times and is our profit factor greater than two or three so let's look at a couple of trades that this one takes in this case same setup here it takes the first entry and instead of trying to measure where the exit point would be on a fibonacci scale instead what we've done is implemented a trailing stop and that's in the settings of the inputs first we've set the trading time from 0900 to 1455 before the market closed this is the times that will open a contract there is a date range parameter in place in case you want to limit the window. We're allowing longs or shorts. In this case, I'm only looking at the longs. Shorts actually seem to hurt the risk of the performance, which is still something to work on. But for now, we're just looking at longs. And the trailing stop at the moment is set to 70 basis points. So this first trade here actually ends up exiting pretty close to the 1.2 line. If I go back and draw that again here, see that our extension ends up somewhere around this zone. The 1.2 is right here. 1.272 is here. So it actually took profits a little bit higher than that. One of the best trades of the entire window is the CPI report trade, or at least the day before. On December 12th, there was a signal that set a long entry at this point. And the normal extension would have been right at this point here. And if you held that contract through towards the end of the trading day, you could exit with a pretty decent profit. But if you held that contract further and allowed the trailing stop to continue, it actually took a lot more than that. The entry is right about this point and this trailing stop exited here. It earned 4.42% or $1,000 on this small $5,000 account, which ended up being a fantastic trade. So the next thing I wanna show is how this performance works over time by looking at multiple contracts. Right now we're looking at the forward contract that expires in March of 2023, but we can also test the performance on older historical contracts just to see if they hold up over time. The micro e-minis expires every quarter, so I have a whole list of all the historical contracts so that I can see how well it performs in each period. And sometimes it does okay, other times it does much better. But what I did is I created a spreadsheet of all those periods and all the performance metrics. So we can take a look at what is typical. What we can see here is that the net profit on average for all of the historical contracts comes out to about 24% per quarter. The median win rate is about 42%, median profit factor of 1.5, median max drawdown is about negative 12. The average trade yields about 15 basis points. And we have a sharp ratio of about 0.67 and a Sortina ratio of 2.44. Every contract period seems to be about 43 trades. And one thing I want to note is that the profit factor is actually rising as time goes on. This most recent period here, the current contract has actually picked up around 34 trades and has a profit factor of 3.2. Let's dig into the code a little bit further. I can show you some of the features that we've incorporated into this trading strategy that might be useful for other strategies that you're working on. One is obviously the ability to choose the trading times, which is using the in session function, just to design to let you choose when we're in session. And then when we go long, we have to make sure that we've met that condition about the trading times. Another feature that I've incorporated here is allowing you to choose between letting it go long and short. So the shorts are separated from the longs. We look at the current contract here. Our profit factor comes down slightly, but our overall absolute returns go up significantly. So one last thing I want to show you here is how you can actually get the historical contracts from TradingView. Because you'll notice here that if I ask for a symbol, like a historical symbol for the micro e minis, it's only going to show me the most recent contracts, the ones that expire this month or into the future. So how do you get the historical contracts? Well, if you type in the name of the contract using the proper convention and then hit enter, you can add it to your list. So let's add the NQs, for example. If I want to add the third quarter of 2022, 
I can type in NQU 2022, and it will act like it can't find a symbol. But if I hit the enter key, it pulls up the contract in my watch list. So now I can actually pull that contract up. And this is the older contract that I can test the strategy on. Now there's plenty to improve on on this strategy. One thing that I want to add next allows me to decide when we take profits, whether that's at the extension level or with a trailing stop, whichever comes first. And then another potential improvement is to add in some market breadth indicators, like the put call ratio, PCC. We might be able to use the ADDQ, which gives us the advance uh, against the open minus the declines against the open. And then there's, of course, the tick queue, which gives us the combined tick values of all of the NASDAQ stocks and how many are ticking upward versus ticking downward. We might also be able to incorporate VIX data that gives us a sense of volatility in the market. And so I'm going to play around with a few more of those and keep releasing updates to this strategy. The last step I want to cover here is how to actually set this up in Trader's Post. So I'm going to set this back to the current March 2023 contract on the minis the micro minis, and we're going to set up the alert that creates the trade. So we'll set the 855 cross strategy. Now there's a couple different options here for whether it does order fills and alert function calls. We're going to do order fills only to send the buy and sell signal. And we'll give this a, a name. This will be the 855 cross strategy. I'm going to empty that because we're going to come back to this. And then on Trader's Post, I'll show you how to set this up using a new webhook and strategy. We'll set up a new webhook, new futures webhook. Make sure it's set to the futures asset class. We'll allow any ticker and save. This is going to give you a new webhook URL. We'll copy that URL. And then in the notification settings, we'll make sure that we've set the URL for this strategy alert. Then we're going to create a new strategy, which always comes up here in the alert too. You can just click create a new strategy. It will be called the 855 crossover strategy. It's going to use the new features webhook I just created. This is going to go both directions, long and short. But if we wanted to just go long only, we could just say bullish. We want to disable side swapping because we don't want it to reverse the position. We just want it to take the signal to go short or take the signal to go long. It's going to trade futures. And we're going to use the signal quantity. In this case, I always have the signal quantity set from trading view to one contract at a time. We'll enter market and exit market. So now we'll subscribe to that strategy using the Traders Post paper account and auto submit these trades. Everything looks good. I'll save and let's enable this strategy. The last step here is to put in the payload we're going to need in our alert. So looking at the webhook, We'll go to send request for the new features webhook. And it's going to give you a few example payloads to use. In this case, we're using a strategy and not an indicator. I want to copy this payload here, the whole thing, including the starting and ending curly braces. And we're going to paste that into TradingView now inside the main message. So remember, I had already pasted in the webhook URL. Now I want to paste in the message. And that's it. If I just create this alert here now every time a trade takes place on this strategy it'll send it over to traders post so if you have any other strategies you want us to cover or you have questions on this strategy in particular feel free to comment or head over to traders post and join us on discord we're trying to cover as many strategies here as we can and cover as many asset classes as we can would love to have you join the conversation and let us know if you have any questions